शट डाउन या शट डाउन लॉकडाउन की कोई वो नहीं है ये मिसकंसेप्शन फैलाया जा रहा है कि हम लॉकडाउन की तरफ बढ़ रहे हैं मैं बार बार कह रहा हूँ कि लॉकडाउन कोरोना का सॉल्यूशन नहीं है ये समय राजनीति करने का नहीं है राजनीति करने के लिए तो पूरी जिंदगी पड़ी है हम लोगों को थोड़े दिन के लिए राजनीति को साइड कर देना चाहिए बयानबाजियों को साइड कर देना चाहिए मैंने मुख्यमंत्री साहब से कहा देर से ही सही आठ महीने बाद ही सही जिस बात की बहुत जरूरत थी इस महामारी के समय आल पार्टी मीटिंग बुलाने की बात मांग हमारी तरफ से बहुत पहले से थी तो मार्केट और बाजार को बंद करने की नियत सरकार की हमने कहा कि पूरी तरह से अरविंद सरकार फेल है दोबारा से मार्केटों को बंद करने का निर्णय होगा तो हल्का निर्णय होगा यानी कि छोटे व्यापारियों को और जो दुकानदारों को बंद किया जा रहा है उसको लेकर के भी सरकार कुछ नहीं बनाए watching news epicenter with me maria shakil delhi is facing a covid emergency with the ongoing festive season and rising pollution on wednesday the capital recorded over 7400 cases with 131 deaths the highest number of fatalities in a day in the city with total cases crossing the half a million mark covid protocols have been literally thrown out of the window with public places namely markets overcrowded with no social distancing and safety rules this behavior is leading to the emergency in the capital and at the same time covid norms are not being enforced at all this crisis is coupled with the rising pollution in the city where experts say the toxic air makes lungs more susceptible to the corona virus In the middle of this crisis the politics refuses to end for a cooperative solution the Delhi government called for an all party meeting but the BJP and the Congress slammed the AAP government for mismanagement with the BJP saying the center is being forced to intervene repeatedly the Delhi high court also pulled up the Delhi government asking why it has woken up from slumber after a surge in cases as pandemic pollution and politics is worsening the crisis in the capital the question is is delhi derailing the wins india has made in the fight against the virus joining me on the show is our big news maker dr vk paul he is the member health of niti aayog and chairperson of covid-19 task force dr paul appreciate your time what Thank went you. wrong with delhi by the end of july it was a success story active cases were down dedicated covid hospitals almost empty when and how did the situation spiral out of control leading to over 1000 deaths in a fortnight well maria the situation was in a way building up because uh, uh, we knew that three important reasons will operate in these months one is the winter se- season which promotes the infections due to respiratory viruses including this particular virus and this is how Uh, it was expected secondly the pollution uh, that does intensify in this period and also then very imminent spate of a number of festivals uh, in this period which means more crowd more people more interaction uh, you know dense population uh, appearing in the streets in markets so in a way it was expected and these warnings have been given hmm. now the point is that in this battle against corona we have tried to the best extent possible a balance between normalcy in life economic activity hmm. with the with control of pandemic to an extent and that is where uh, you know now the the pendulum has gone in in one other direction Uh, that the virus has now overwhelmed, and uh, but we will fight it. 
Hmm. We will fight and both state and the uh, union government are working together intensely for a 360 degree response. Hmm. But I think above all, it is the behavior of all of us as citizens, as individuals, as families, that is so critical. Because if we ensure the preventive measures, the virus does not spread. Dr. That is Paul, the beginning of, yes. uh, of our efforts to combat the virus. Do you Once see it this is spreading, some then kind there of are limited fatigue. options by way of trying to suppress it further hmm. through isolation of cases, quarantine of contacts and surveillance and containment, etc. Then, of course, whatever consequences do appear in terms of sick individual, you look, look after them in the hospital. Hmm. But where does it start? Yes. It starts from spread physically from one individual to two, from two to four and so on. And I think that is where we have faltered that in this period of time with adverse environment setting up, the infection spread because of uh, crowding and all those issues that I referred to. You know, um, experts are also saying, sir, that fatigue set in the city COVID management once the cases started declining by mid-July. What is your assessment? Can you repeat that question, ma'am? I'm saying, is there a sense of fatigue that had set in? And that is the reason why things improved in mid-July and then things suddenly in, in this month that we are looking at in November, we are calling it alarming. You know, there is indeed some degree of uh, fatigue, uh, truly, because uh, it has been long. Fatigue occurs at the level of individuals, at the level of families, as a community as a whole. Fatigue also sets in in, in uh, among uh, healthcare workers and frontline workers and so on, yes. But then this battle cannot be won by getting fatigued. We still have a very long way forward. Hmm. We still have, even in Delhi, if you go by the last zero survey, more than 70% individuals are still susceptible. We cannot rest on our laurels. Hmm. We cannot, even if we controlled it once in June, July, uh, we controlled it next time somewhere in September, we cannot, we cannot take it for granted. Hmm. And this virus will come up again and again and again. And so, so the entire I use, when you effort, say again and again and again, again. must be intensified all the time. The village can, vigil cannot be allowed to be diluted. Dr. Paul, when you say again and again and again, uh, are we not looking at any time soon this virus finally leaving us? Well, maybe I think next we, year sometime. No, nobody knows. Maria, you must remember, as I said, that uh, more than 80% of India's population is still susceptible. Okay. And therefore, the virus will catch us if we allow the virus to be caught, to be us to be caught by the virus. Hmm. So it is, it cannot be taken for granted. Right. We have seen how it has returned in other nations. And those nations also, uh, you know, made the same, same kinds of mistakes, as you know. What happened in Europe was, again, taking things lightly, holidaying, opening up. So irresponsible behavior then led to a bigger strike by the virus. The, the, the spikes there are bigger than the original spike. That's Devastation right. is bigger in terms of the cases and disruptions. Hmm. And therefore, please understand that we are learning about this virus's behavior to a, to, to a new extent every time. There are surprises. But I wish to emphasize that, remember, this virus has caused less mortality in our country. That's right. And we take pride in that. Hmm. But that should not make us accept this problem and take it lightly. There are long-term effects. Lung fibrosis is forever, for a very long time, time to come. Thrombosis events have occurred. Mental issues have come up. And also, heart disease uh, get worsened and last for a long period of time. And then we are also now very clear that the infection can recur in the same person. When you can have an infection today, you will not necessarily have the antibodies to protect you. It is coming up repeatedly. Hmm. A new attack will happen. Hmm. It is a fact. Now we know it, that a recurrence can take place. Please take this infection seriously. Hmm. And it leaves long-term effects. Yes, you Dr. don't get recovery Paul. for hmm. weeks and months. Hmm. It's a scary situation. And young people also should remember that it is not a guarantee that just an age on just if the age is on your side, the serious consequences do you know will not happen. And look at how the whole population, whole state can be devastated if we allow the situation to get out of control. Yes. You know that there is a issue about availability of beds. We are trying to ramp it up so 
effectively, so rapidly, so energetically. But then <laughs> there is a limit to all these preparations that we can make. Yes, Dr. Paul, you know, Ahmedabad is going for night curfew from 9 yes. p.m. to 6 a.m. Is partial lockdown in certain cities the only way forward to contain the third wave? You know, the option of a lockdown should be the last option. How many lockdowns can you do? We must be able to keep the virus in such numbers and of such intensity that livelihoods can go on. Normal activity can go on. Hospitals can function. Offices can function to the extent they are required. And this is possible. But I think putting things, all things together, responsibility of the government, responsibility of the individuals and society as a whole has to clinch this. Today, close, you know, the number that we are seeing in Delhi are the highest for a for a, for a state, which is something like 2.4 crore population. We are bigger than the total number of cases uh, in Kerala, which is about 6,000. Hmm. Maharashtra, total 5,000. Uttar Pradesh, the, such a big state, is only 2,500. It is possible. They are also experiencing similar changes in the weather, for example, to a different extent. Yes. It is possible. And therefore, let's, let's you know, be very clear that uh, we must have our own behavior first and foremost, be a responsible behavior. And today I appreciate that uh, the, the fine has been raised from 500 rupees to 2,000 rupees. Nobody wants to do these things. No state, no government wants to you know, penalize the, the, the population, penalize hmm. people. Hmm. But then what do you do? If you're telling so intensely, repeatedly, in media, in press conferences, through posters, Hmm. And the Honorable Prime Minister has come on television with folded hands pleading with us that please, please wear masks. Please yes. maintain Doga's ki duri. Please wash your hands. Please Dr. Paul, protect yourself. You know, there, there seems to be a lot of optimism regarding Pfizer vaccine, which could get emergency authorization from the FDA by the end of the month in United States. But in India, there is a degree of concern regarding this vaccine. Is it purely to do with the fact that it needs to be stored at sub-zero temperature? Well, India, uh, Indian government is very keenly watching all the developments in the space of vaccines within India and globally. And therefore, when we are looking at a development of the kind uh, that has come up in, uh, in, in the media, in public space, that Pfizer vaccine has come up, Moderna has come up, we are watching it carefully. But to answer your specific question with regard to Pfizer, there are several issues around, around this particular vaccine. Firstly, remember, much of the supplies, at least in the initial months that are likely to be available as a stockpile, from the company are already booked. Hmm. We are in contact with Pfizer. We are discussing in what way can India, if need be, and if it is appropriate in terms of the regulatory uh, clearances of our own country, how much can, can Pfizer vaccine be made available? Also, our norm till today is that for a vaccine to be given to Indian people, hmm. we always have human trial to an extent conducted in the country. So that's one issue. And in contrast, for the five vaccines that are undergoing trials here, have therefore that condition already met. So this is one other concern. Seven, minus 70 degree storage and transportation is not a small issue at all. Okay. We are looking at crores of doses to be delivered to the nook and corner of India. Hmm. Therefore, it, this kind of a vaccine would have a very severe constraint in terms of its uh, implementation and dissemination. Also remember, they are using mRNA technology, hmm. which is an RNA based, this is an RNA based vaccine, which goes and changes the behavior of the, of the cell, of human cell and interferes with the genetic processes to an extent. Okay. We are still learning about its safety. There are concerns about it. Yes, of course, if it is uh, approved uh, through a good regulatory system globally or in India, all these points will be taken care of. Last but question to you. For a pregnant woman, okay. we would like to know more about the data okay. and so on and so forth. So therefore, right. we are watching this space carefully. We would like this vaccine to be successful. We would like the practicalities related to this vaccine to be of nature that 
will be conducive to scale up on uh, on on such a large swath of uh, indian ge- geography so what is the government of india's plan regarding distribution who will get the shots first well the honorable health minister has from time to time communicated the broad principles that we are working with remember it's work in progress it's work which is take into account multiple scenarios but it is a deep work that the government of india is is uh, undertaking hmm. it depends what is the level of availability of vaccines if the vaccines are limited in number it will be available only for a restricted population if the vaccines are available in larger number that's right more priority groups can be included having said that because we have indian uh, enterprise in in vaccine development of a, of a very deep quality and ex, you know extended quality and reach we are hopeful that we can have even in phase 1 a reasonable number of uh, uh, of citizens of india the broad principles are the first priority is that you protect the health system and you protect a pandemic control system so that the pandemic remains uh, in reasonable control nationally and health workers are available to look after sick patients in intensive care units in hospitals and so on so you first priority generally agreed within the nation and globally by who and otherwise protect right. the health system and protect the frontline workers the pandemic control warriors immediate second priority is protect those people who have excessive excessive risk of mortality who right. are these people and when we look at the analysis of deaths that occur in covid-19 severe disease hmm. more than 80% of these deaths occur in individuals who are more than 50 years of age hmm. and often these are individuals who have comorbidity such as kidney disease heart disease liver disease lung disease and so on so picking up people of above a certain age because the risk increases with increasing age That's right. And to include individuals with comorbidities, which predispose them to higher mortality risk, would be then one way of looking at the priority group. All then, right. of course, anybody who has severe morbidity, even a child who right. has cancer, for example, or immunodeficiency or sickle cell disease, is also a candidate. Okay. Now, how do you decide all this? Well, you decide this on the basis of potential availability of the vaccine by making the best possible effort. local national international vaccine whatever best right. we can put together and then looking at the priority beginning with a small circle and then enlarging the circle as the number becomes available Thank you. these are the broad guidelines that we have used to make plans plans which will can cater to multiple scenario with more liberal availability and less liberal availability but i am hopeful that we will be able to cater to a very large part of uh, we, our we population certainly within the as well we certainly hope as well dr paul always a pleasure to have you on my shows thank you so much for your time and thanks for answering all the questions that are related to corona virus we are worried about the third phase and third wave miss dr paul there answering all the questions jasmine shah The observations of the delhi high court has been scathing talking about that specific part about what you did between 1st and 11th and did it really require courts to wake your government out of the slumber uh maria that i wouldn't say that it has required the courts to wake uh, the government uh, uh, you know in the situation delhi government has been at the forefront of putting up a very courageous effort and every single advice that health experts have been giving us you know be it increasing testing today delhi is testing more than any city or state in the country be it contact tracing for every positive case we are tracing up to 15 contacts be it ramping up hospital infrastructure today we have 17000 beds out of which 7000 are uh, are available are vacant the only challenge at this moment and we know that we knew that pollution you know and pollution is not just uh, something that uh, you know it it is a, a northern indian problem where delhi the people of delhi have to face the worst yes. because of pollution and festive season we are seeing a temporary spike and a wave 
uh, the third wave of COVID. But and globally, wherever Shusha, other cities have faced such a, a wave, just allow me to complete. Yes, please. you would have seen that the health infrastructure failed completely, be it New York, be it, you know, London, be it advanced countries. But in Delhi, you are not seeing that. You are actually seeing that the doctors, the hospitals, and the administration putting it a very strong effort. And we are glad that now center has also joined hands with the state government hmm. in increasing the ICU bed capacity, which yes. is the only problem as of now. What and kind of monitoring is... and marshalling are you doing? Look at the situation seriously with a magnifying glass. You have crossed cities yes. like New York and Sao Paulo is what the court said. No, in terms of if you look at the peak that occurred in the city of New York, when they had 6,000 cases, they had the daily death figure was at 500 plus. We in Delhi, our record, which was uh, two days back, was 130 plus, which is very concerning. But every single effort, as I again mentioned, is being made with the advice of the health experts. And if you see the trend of the last two or three days, the positivity rate is now actually started declining. So we are hopeful that with sustained efforts, with working together with all the parties, all the stakeholders, which is what we should do. This is a huge epidemic. And national capital, it's everybody's national capital. And we need to work collaboratively, okay. leave Fine. politics aside, which is what the message of the CM is, and we will be okay. able to deal with this situation. I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, the warnings that had come from the National Center for Disease Control in just a bit with you, Jasmine Shah, and what your government did. But before that, a quick word from Richa. Richa, can we expect, because the center and the state is working in coordination, why do politics? Why... Uh, you know, not work in tandem because it is, after all, about lives. The lives are at stake here. Can the BJP, the Congress, the Ahmadmi parties, all of you come together and say that, yes, it's people first and hence there'll be no politics over it? Thank you for uh, inviting me in this debate. Uh, Centre is definitely here for the people of Delhi and it is trying hard, very hard, whenever Delhi government requires and whenever it does not require, then also center has always uh, come up and stood up for the people of Delhi. Whereas the state government has failed miserably on all the fronts, it has been, uh, even today, the High Court has termed, coined a term for Delhi government which is total inaction and as a tortoise. They are only believing in knee-jerk reactions. On one hand, they are participating in dance programs without masks. On the other hand, they are imposing a 2,000 rupee mask on the citizens of Delhi who are any which ways under total uh, double whammy of pollution and corona and an effect, ineffective government. So the government of Delhi is in a, a clueless and ineffective in a state of confusion. Earlier they, used, they said they will have...